If you want to master EQ, but you feel like you're just stuck in the weeds, well, today I've got my best advice for you. We're going to be talking about a tool that I use on every single one of my mixes. Stick around to find out. Hello, everybody. Dylan Pines here with Musician on a Mission. And today we are talking about one of the biggest frustrations about learning EQ. Where the hell do I even start? It's like being given an empty canvas with no idea how to paint, right? It's so frustrating because you have infinite possibilities but you have no idea what you're really looking for. Because EQ is such a massively open-ended tool, you go onto the internet and you start looking up EQ tips and tricks. You make some amalgamation of all of these tips and tricks, your knowledge on how to EQ. I hate to break it to you, but 95% of those tips and tricks, they're probably gonna hurt you more than help you, especially if you don't understand the foundation of how to use an EQ properly. And that foundation is the best and most frustrating piece of advice about EQ. Use your ears. Now wait, 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 don't, don't, don't go just yet, don't go just yet. That is a frustrating piece of advice, I know. I don't like it either, but it is so paramount to actually being able to get EQ right. But let's talk about why that advice really sucks to hear even though it's such important advice. You know, if we think about that open canvas again, that empty canvas, you're standing there, you don't know how to paint, and someone comes up, looks at the canvas, and just says, oh, just paint, just paint it. I would look at them and slap them. I'd be so frustrated, because it's like, well, if I don't know how to paint, you coming up and telling me, oh, just paint, is not really helpful. The difficulty there is that someone needs to teach you how to paint first before you can actually paint onto that canvas. You need to have a framework that you're working with. And today, I've got that framework for you. I've got a system that will hopefully, maybe for the first time, allow you to EQ your mixes with confidence. Allow me to introduce the balance chart. It's my favorite tool that Moam has ever built and it's my free gift to you. This video is gonna be going over how to use this chart. So if you want to get your hands on it, just click the link on screen or down in the description below to get your own free copy. So let's break this chart down. You know, what exactly are we looking at here? Well, you can see there's three different parts of the chart. There are two blocks of red with a bunch of words, and there's one block of green with a bunch of words. You can see at the bottom, there's actually a frequency spectrum along with several ranges, showing you the different ranges of the frequency spectrum, like your sub bass, your low mids, your upper mids, your highs. This chart is going to help you to understand, basically, where do certain sounds live in the frequency spectrum? And how can I either boost things or cut things to create those sounds, or maybe to get rid of those sounds? So let's look at some of these words. Up here at the top, you see words like boomy, or muddy, or tinny, or brittle. You can actually see these are each placed very specifically. Boomy, if you go and look down at the bottom, that little bubble is kind of sitting somewhere between about 40 hertz and about 150 hertz. That's because that's typically where the sound boomy lives. Because it's in the red and it's on top, Really what that means is that a boomy sound is caused by having too much sonic energy in that area of the frequency spectrum. So if I was trying to get rid of a boomy sound, I'd probably want to cut somewhere in that range. Now let's look down at the bottom. You can see words like thin or hollow, distant or dull. Again, each of these little bubbles coincides with a different part of the frequency spectrum. Thin is somewhere between about 20 hertz and you know, 300 hertz. Distant between 1.5 kilohertz and maybe seven kilohertz. Dull, about seven, all the way up to 20 kilohertz. That is where those sounds live. Because they are in the bottom, that bottom red box, that means that there is not enough sonic energy there. What that means is that this sound, thinness, distance, whatever, is created by having a hole in that area. So that spot 
or somewhere around that spot might be where you want to boost. And then finally, let's look at this middle box, the green box. You see words like warm, full, bright, air, present. Same thing as all of these other bubbles. These all coincide with different parts of the frequency spectrum. The difference being is that these words are very positive, right? These words are words that we want to describe our sounds as. You know, we might want more warmth or want more brightness or more air. And if you can describe a sound using these words, then that really means that you have a balanced frequency spectrum in that area. I don't have too much in my lower mids because then I would be muddy. I don't have too little in my lower mids because then I might be thin or hollow. I have just the right amount. So it sounds warm. So now that you understand what you're looking at, let me tell you the main two ways that you're gonna be using this tool. You're gonna to ask yourself one of two questions. How would I describe the sound of this instrument? Or how do I want this instrument to sound? So if you ask yourself the question, how does this instrument sound? I might say, okay, well, it sounds warm, it sounds full, but it sounds kind of dull. And we can see on the chart that dull lives up in the top end, up in the highs. It's basically saying, oh, there's not enough frequency content up here. There's not enough sonic energy up here. So I would know in order to get rid of that word, I need to make a boost somewhere in that area. Or on the flip side, if I ask the question, what do I want my instrument to sound like? I might say, oh, I want my instrument to sound again warm and then when you find the word warm or the synonym of it you know if you use a different word than warm then you can easily see okay well that's what i want i obviously don't have it that means i either have too much energy in that area or not enough energy in that area and you can start to figure out where it is you need to either boost or cut at that point you just get up your eq you create a band and you start sweeping around in that range until you find something that sounds either good or maybe sounds bad and either boost it or cut it. Really is as simple as that. It gives you a framework for the first time to know what you're looking for, but still take the advice, use your ears. In all seriousness, I use this on every single mix. I even have it, you can see this real quick. I even have it as the background of my computer just in case I ever need to very quickly reference it. This can be used on literally any sound. And that's because this is like the foundation of EQ. Being able to hear a problem, knowing where that problem lives in the frequency spectrum, and then being able to solve that problem. So let's go through a few examples so that you can see this in practice. So first, let's look at this acoustic guitar. I'm gonna put the balance chart back up and I want you to listen and I want you to think, how would I describe this sound? And then look for that word or a synonym of that word in the balance chart. So what words did you use whenever you were describing this sound? Well, the main word that I used was boomy. It sounds too boomy to me. So let's look at our balance chart. Where does boomy live? So you can see it's in that top red box. It's somewhere between about 40 hertz and 140 hertz. So that is where we're gonna start. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab an EQ. I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to just make a little bell and I'm just gonna sweep around in that area until I find something that kind of pricks my ears up where I'm like, ah, yeah, that's the problem. And then I'm just gonna cut it. Kind of like right there. Yeah, you could really hear that like boom, boom that happens whenever those low notes are hit. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm just going to turn down the gain until it feels like my acoustic guitar is balanced. And I'm probably also going to adjust the cue as well. That's more of a taste thing. That's just kind of really centering it in on the frequency in question. Yeah, I like that. So now let's do a before and after. And keep in mind, anytime you do any sort of big EQ move, 
you're going to lose or gain some loudness. That's why gain staging is so important. Gain staging your plugins. You got to do it. It's going to help to show you what this actually sounds like in the real world. Now we could spend a whole video just talking about that. So we're just going to listen to a before and after without gain staging and then I'm very quickly going to gain stage it and you'll be able to really hear what's happening. <laughs> So it definitely sounded quite a bit more balanced. I feel like I got a lot of warmth back without losing a lot of boom, but it still sounds kind of weaker, right? So I'm going to very quickly gain stage this. I'm just going to put a loudness meter on here just for a moment. We're going to listen to see how loud it was before the EQ, and then we're just going to see how loud it was after the EQ. And then I'm going to just turn up the volume of the EQ to compensate. <laughs> Okay, so about negative 20.5. So now let's check this out. Okay, so about negative 23.5. So I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna add three dBs because I've lost about three dBs in loudness. And now we're gonna really be able to hear what this sounds like before and after. part about this is that you not only gained clarity and brightness, but you didn't lose any of the body. And that's only because I knew exactly where to look. So let's move on to another example. Over here, I actually have a bass guitar. We're going to bring the balance chart back up and I'm going to do the same thing. I just want you to listen to it and think, how would I describe this sound? And I'm going to let you know now, there's going to be a few different words that you're going to be looking for. We're not just going to be fixing one problem. There's actually a few problems we're gonna be fixing. Okay, so the first thing that I heard is that it felt pretty thin especially for a bass guitar, which is usually really full and nice. So if you look at our balance chart, that means that we probably don't have enough energy somewhere between about 20 hertz and about uh, 250 hertz or 300 hertz, somewhere around there. So let's go back over to our EQ and I'm just going to grab again another peak and I'm just going to start sweeping around that area, see if I could find something that sounds pleasant to my ears. And that's where we're going to boost. right there. I like that quite a bit, actually. It just fills it up a little bit. But obviously, we still have some problems. So another problem that I was hearing is that it sounds a little bit boxy to my ears. Um, kind of like a little muddy, a little boxy. You can actually see that there's some overlap in that area. That's going to really help to tell us where our problem lives. You know, if our muddy sound tends to live somewhere between about, you know, 100 hertz and 400 hertz, and our boxy sound is somewhere between about 300 and 600, then we're really looking at about 300, you know, 200 to 400, somewhere around there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab another bell and I'm going to search in that area, see if I can find the sound that is offending my ears and then cut it. Yeah, kind of right there. So let's try cutting that. Okay, yeah, I'm feeling that. It's getting better and better. There was actually another word that I would use to describe this as I was listening, and that is actually the word honky. Now you can see in our chart, honky or nasally is another word for it. That usually lives somewhere between like 500 
and a thousand hertz. I'm gonna try to see if I can make a cut around there to kind of clean up that part of the frequency spectrum. So same thing, I'm gonna grab another bell and go from there. Kind of like right here. Right here, there we go. Like wah wah wah, that kind of sound sounds like almost like a wah wah pedal. That's really kind of getting in my nose. I'm gonna cut that. Yeah, so that is feeling already so much better to me. So let's listen to a before and after. It's fuller, it's warmer, it's not quite so plinky and nasally. I'm really feeling it. It's feeling so much better. And I know that that's going to fit into the mix so nicely. So let me show you one more example before we move on. I actually have over here an electric guitar and we're actually gonna do the same thing as before. Let's bring up the balance chart. I'm gonna play this and I want you to think, how would I describe this instrument? And then look for those words or their synonyms in the balance chart. <laughs> Okay, so as we're listening to this, there are three words that come to mind. Thin, tinny, and harsh, or maybe even sibilance. Though sibilance is usually, you know, that's a vocal thing. Guitars can also have sibilance. That's that string noise that you're hearing. So I'm just gonna grab an EQ and let's figure out where each of those spots live. And let's start off first off by fixing our thinness problem. As you saw before, that's somewhere between about 20 hertz to about three or 400 hertz. And that just means that there's not enough energy in that area. So we're gonna need to make a boost. <laughs> Yeah, about right there feels good to me. Okay, it doesn't feel quite so thin anymore, but we still have our other problems. First off, let's look at tinny, or kind of plinky is another word that I like to use. That lives somewhere between about one kilohertz and two kilohertz. So I'm just gonna go ahead, grab another band. Let's do some sweeping. Yeah, about right there, it's really hurts your ears. So let's just take this and turn it down. And for this particular guitar part, I might need to turn it down pretty aggressively. Okay, better. We still have one more problem, and that is that harshness, that sibilant sound, the string sound. So harshness, if you remember our balance chart, that lives somewhere between about one kilohertz and seven or eight kilohertz. But sibilance, that lives more between about three and uh, 10 kilohertz. So if you're using two different words to describe a sound, well, look for the crossover. So I'm gonna grab another band, go over here, and I'm gonna start sweeping around somewhere between about three and seven kilohertz, because I'm betting it's gonna be somewhere in there. <laughs> about right here. Just that chick, 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 chick sound that's just too aggressive to my ears. So let's just take it down. Yeah, I really like this. It's got a nice moody feel to it. So let's do a before and after. So 
So that's pretty much how you use the balance chart. And trust me, the more you use it, the more you will internalize it. The first few times you use it, you might have to really work with it, really figure out how it, how it works, how it feels to use it. But at a certain point, all you're going to need is to think of a word, look at the chart and say, all right, cool, and then move on from there. Now, there are a few caveats that I want to bring up, a few different things that you just want to be aware of when using this chart. There are times where when you hear a problem in one area, but a particular boost or cut in that area isn't seeming to fix the problem, that you might actually have to do a boost or a cut on the opposite end of the frequency spectrum. This is what I call the seesaw effect, where you hear a problem on one side, but the problem actually lives on the other. For example, if you hear some muddiness, which means there's too much energy in the low mids, and you make some cuts around there and it's just, you're not really feeling it, well, the problem might actually be in the upper mids. Maybe there's not enough presence or character or definition, which means you need to make a boost in the upper mids. So you get that seesaw effect. By boosting in the upper mids, you actually solve the problem that you thought was in the lower mids. Now, this doesn't happen nearly as often as just the usual use of the balance chart, but it's still something to be aware of. Another thing to bring up, if an instrument doesn't have any frequencies in the area you're trying to boost in, no amount of boosting is going to help. If you are working with a synthesizer and there's just nothing going on up in the top end for some reason, boosting the top end by 20 dBs is not going to fix it. You've got to add new frequencies, either by going in and changing the original tone or by adding some clever usage of saturation. This is true with electric guitars and with basses and pianos and all of these different instruments. You're going to have to change the original tone to make sure that there are frequencies in the area you're trying to boost. Otherwise, you're just boosting air. And one final important thing to say, this chart covers 95% of EQ usage but there are still some things you're going to have to do on your own. You're not going to be able to use this chart to do anything with your cleaning. You know, if you are trying to maybe fix some room resonances, or maybe you're trying to get rid of a whole bunch of low-end gunk with a high-pass filter, all that kind of cleaning EQ, you're going to just have to do on your own. This chart isn't really going to help you much there. Or another example is pocket EQ. If you're trying to do some pocket EQ or some range allocation, you know, that's more about getting all of the different instruments to sit well together. That's going to be more just deciding where do I want to boost in this instrument so that I can cut it in another instrument. That's more just you using your own brain rather than using this chart. But for everything else, this chart can be so, so helpful. So if you want to download it for yourself, it's my free gift to you. Just click the link on screen or down in the description below. I really would hope that you love it. It's seriously one of my favorite things that we have ever made. It's something that I use in every single mix. And for me, it was like a big aha moment for EQ. Like I knew how to do EQ, obviously. I wouldn't be teaching EQ without it. But for the first time, I felt like I had a workflow. I felt like I had something that allowed me to understand what I was trying to do rather than just absentmindedly twiddling knobs and saying, oh yeah, that sounds good, and moving on. That is going to be about it for me. If you're new here, please like and subscribe. We make tutorials and tips and tricks just like this one every single week on this channel. We would love to help you grow. This has been Dylan Pines with Musician on a Mission. And remember, create regardless. Music